Good afternoon, everyone. On behalf of the entire staff of Beach Ridge Motor Speedway and the Cusack family, it's my pleasure to welcome you to Maine's oldest continually operating family-owned speedway. My name is Bruce Eldy, your race commentator. It's our the lower point, limited sportsman cars and drivers coming into the second week of racing here at the speedway. On the pole, driving the number 73, will be Larry Ramsey Jr. to his outside in the 83, Donnie Whitten. Second row to the inside in the 96 is John Maycomber. To his outside in the number 53 will be Don Miner. Assistant starter, Junior Niles, atop the flag stand. He gives the all clear as the drivers glance across one last time. Pace car will make its way onto the infield pit road. We look for green at turn four. Larry Ramsey, Donnie Whitten bring the field down. Flagman asked him to pick it up just a bit. Green is out. Donnie Whitten from the outside as there are problems on the number 73 of Ramsey. He drops back. Car sideways. The 53 gets tagged, turned about. Does a nice job of getting the car back in a straight line. We stay green. A nice bit of driving by Don Miner in the 53 as he got sideways there a couple of times. But Donnie Whitten shows the way in the number 83. On the move now. Keep your eyes on the number six, Billy Thompson. Suffered engine problems opening day. Kind of a discouraging start. Talked to him just briefly, and he said he's ready to go this afternoon. On the move, battling for that second place position. On the outside is Thompson taking over the second place position. Black flag going out to the number 10, Charlie Roussel, as he has a bumper dragging. Battle continuing now as Thompson looks to the inside of race leader Whitten. Takes over the spot between turns one and two. Your new leader on the backstretch, Billy Thompson Jr. in the number six. Quick run to the front. Last qualifying spot would be in the hands of the number 12, Tim Gendron, right at this time. Blackman still trying to get the attention of the number 10, who has the bumper dragging. Very difficult for the drivers to pick up that... Uh, black flag when they are in a group of cars. Thompson stretching his lead out now over the second place contender Donnie Whitten in the 83. Then comes a battle now for the third place position. Wayne Poland working to the outside of John Maycomber. Final qualifying spot still in the hands of Tim Gendron in the number 12. Wayne Poland works his way out and around Maycomber in the 96 to take over the third position. Starter indicates they'll be approaching the halfway mark next time by. 15 lap qualifier. It will be eight down and seven to go as the cars cross the stripe. Alton Reserve now putting the pressure to the 96 as he pulls to the inside, working beneath the 96 of John Maycomber, trying to take over that fourth place position. Last qualifier at the moment would be the 25 of Kevin Buck. Remember, only 12 cars to qualify for the main event. Poland now with a lot of pressure to the back bumper of the second place competitor, Donnie Whitten in the 83. Last qualifying spot back in the hands of Tim Gendron once again. Saturday indicates it will be just two laps to go. Next time by race leader number six, Billy Thompson with a comfortable lead over Donnie Whitten. Witten receiving considerable pressure now from Wayne Poland in the number 79. 
Then comes the 08 of Alton Reserve. And the number 17 of Jim Burke round out the top five. White flag in the air for Thompson. One lap to go. Donnie Witten trying to hold off Wayne Poland for that second place position. Poland right at the back bumper of the number 83 trying to find a way by in this last lap. Looks to the inside now. Check it flag out for Thompson as he collects the first qualifier of the day. Donnie Witten, Wayne Poland, Alton Meserve, and Jim Burt, your top five. Unofficially, the last qualifying spot did go to Tim Gendron in the number 12. The rest of the cars will have to be back a little bit later on for the consolation event. Coasting down now to the start-finish line area. Nice round of applause, please, for Billy Thompson, winner of heat number one. Definitely a young man to watch in the feature event coming up a little bit later on. Number 40 is driven by rookie Jeff Salibi to his outside, the 07 of Doug Shores. Row four to the inside, the Chief, Ed Strong in the number 10 to his outside in the number 80 this afternoon, Butch Buzzle. The number nine is driven by Phil Weeks, the zero, Gary Clough, and the number 50. Number 50 out of Needham, Mass, Doug. Bichotti, I believe, we'll check that name for you. But right now, all clear from start at Eddie Walsh. Look for a start at turn four. Green is out. David Bath from the inside. Has Sprague working to his outside in the number one. Sprague on the move on the backstretch. Puts a bumper ahead down into turn three. Side by side at turn four. Bath on the inside. Sprague to the outside. Sprague by a bumper across the stripe. Play continues, a half car length lead now on the backstretch. Trying to squeeze by to the outside of David Bath in the number five at turn four. Bath trying to close it back up, can't do it. Sprague has the point to himself, followed by David Bath. Jim Emerson in the number two, Doug Shores in the 0-7. Gary Clough in the zero, round out your top five. Doug Shaw's on the move on the back stretch as he works to the outside of Jim Emerson in the number two. Emerson filling in for Todd Mead in the number two. Doug Shaw's in the number seven taking over that third place position. One of the few Fords in competition here at the Speedway. General Motors body products tend to dominate the field. One of the exceptions is the 07. Sportsman driven by Doug Shores. Also on the move, the zero of Gary Clough. Clough up from the limited sportsman ranks last year. Made a fine showing opening day in this zero. A lot of rookies in the 92 season. Another one of those rookies in the number 10. Up from the limited sportsman division. Ed Strong, Elliot May. Walsh indicates it will be two to go next time by. Ten lap qualifier for the Super Sportsman. The 07 closes it right up now. Continues to be Spray, David Bath, and Doug Shores as they have broken away from the rest of the pack. Doug Shores now getting beneath the number five of David Bath. Shores trying to take over that second place position as they go under the white flag. One to go. Doug Shores has worked his way up into that second place position. The 07 closes hard now on the David Sprague number one, but the checkered flag in the air. Shores out of shape just a little bit, straightens the car out. David Sprague, Doug Shores. David Bath, the zero of Gary Clough. And the number two, this afternoon, Jimmy Emerson, your top five.
Winner of heat number one coast down to the start finish line area. Nice round of applause, please, for David Sprague in the Garrett Services Channel One video number one super sportsman. I'd like to read those junior fan. Flagman asked him to hold it steady till turn four. Green is out. Gary Babb from the point. Drives it hard into turn one. The battle is for second. Mike Mayetta Jr. working beneath Gary Johnson has the second place position. Problems on the number 50. Headed right back on a pit road. Continues to be Barry Babb showing the way in the zero, followed by Mike Mayetta Jr., Gary Johnson, Glenn Cusack, and Scott Watts. Brief appearance by that number 50. That was none other than Bobby Gahan. Racing with the exception of the number four. Bobby Babb on the move on the outside as he works to the outside of Pete Rondo. Coming up on the halfway mark. Five down, five to go. Barry Babb continues to show the way in the zero. Then Mike Mayetta Jr. Gary Johnson in the 53. Glenn Cusack in the number two. Scott Watts in the F80. Cusack on the move now as he takes a look to the outside of Gary Johnson. Down into turn three. Cusack trying to make the outside groove work for him early this afternoon. Flagman indicates it will be two to go this time by. Battle continues to wage for that third place position. Cusack drives it up beside the 53 now through turns one and two on the backstretch. They're side by side down into turn three. Gary Johnson to the inside. Glenn Cusack to the outside. White flag in the air. Battle for the third place position and the battle three-way battle for the fifth place position. Jacket flag out, Barry Babb claims the first qualifier for the late models, followed by Mayetta, Gary Johnson, Glenn Cusack, and Scott Watts, your top five. The 89 is driven by, we will get it for you, the 33 Bob Dilt, the 24 last week's feature winner, Danny Bubar, ready for start out of turn four, Green is out. two cars the 87 is driven by Bob Collette and the 30 Ken McLeod Dennis Quinn shows the way followed by Carl Hinkson in the number 21 Robbie Herrick working on the outside Dennis Hall holding down the fourth place position and the 99 Jim Colbert Jr. holds down position number five Robbie Herrick on the move. The number 86 working to take over that second place position as he works to the outside of rookie Carl Hinkson in the number 21. Hinkson doing a nice job for a rookie. Turned some fast time in warm-ups this afternoon. Spin in turn two. Mike Field gets turned about. He is able to refire the car. We stay green. Side-by-side -side battle continues for that second place position. Robbie Herrick with a fender ahead out of turn two. Working outside of the 21 of Carl Hinkson. Then comes Dennis Hall. 
Also on the move, Jim Colpert in the 99. Jeff Morgan looking for racing room to the inside. Then comes the 91 champion, Larry Gelinas, in the number 77, momentarily boxed in. Gelinas looking for racing room, and there just isn't any at the moment. Once again, 12 cars to qualify for the main event. Qualifier at the moment, I believe, would be the 62. 62 was driven by Jeff Charlene. Now it would be the 78, De Flecto. Lightman indicates they will be coming up on the halfway mark. to be Dennis Quinn, your leader, followed by Carl Hinkson in the 21, now Jeff Morgan up to third. Larry Gelinas has worked his way up to fourth in the number 37. Then comes Robbie Herrick, rounding out the top five. Larry Gelinas now, the 91 champion, on the move in the number 37. Keep your eyes on the 37, one of the real hot shoes in this limited sportsman division. Outstanding job by rookie Carl Hickson in the number 21. Running with a lot of experienced drivers out there and certainly holding his own this afternoon. Problems on the number 30. As he is off the pace and apparently headed on to pit road. Last week's semi-feature winner heads on the pit road. Last qualifier at the moment would continue to be Dave Fecto. Larry Joinas continues to work in that outside groove along with Dennis Hall. Blackman indicates just two to go next time by. Fine run by Dennis Quinn as he has driven from that pole position to show the way throughout this qualifier. Larry Gelinas and Carl Hinkson come together. Gelinas gets turned about. Cars are in the white flag lap, just one lap to go. Checkered flag is out for the 0-6 to win it. Dennis Quinn, followed by Jeff Morgan, Rob Herrick, Dennis Hall, and Jim Colbert Jr. Your top five. Unofficially, the last qualifier was the 87. Bob Collette, but right now coasting down to the start finish line area. Winner of heat number two in the limited sportsman division, Dennis Quinn. Fine run by Dennis Quinn this afternoon in his qualifying event. In the 0 3, Steve Howard to his outside. In the 69, Tim Maloney. Row four to the inside. Danny Palmer in the 93. For 14, that's Chris Rule. And rounding out the field from Gray Main in the number 99, Steve Wilson. Ten laps on tap for heat number two in the Super Sportsman Division. Flagman Eddie Walsh gives the all clear. As the cars work down into turn three, we look for a start at turn four. Spike Manitol on the point. Green is out. Manitol jumps in with a quick lead. Cars tangle off over turn four. Momentarily they hook together. That takes Danny Palmer, Tim Maloney, and Kevin Durgan. Right out over the apron. All the cars continue underway. We stay green. Spike Manitol. Mark Field. 
Pelton in the 27, Rod Booty in the 08, Steve Howard in the 03, your top five. Cars on the move in the outside groove. Richard Bubba Pelton in the 27. Working to challenge Mark Field for that second place position. Cars tangle in turn one. Steve Howard gets a little out of shape. Chris Rule works under the 03 to move up a position. Now Rule is on the move on the outside of the 19 of Russ Johnson. Chris Rule, one of the winningest drivers in the 91 season. Tim Maloney on pit road with the 69. Cross flags out halfway. Five down, five to go. Pelton sideways out of turn four. Manages to hold on to that 27. But Mark Field back to challenge to the inside. Chris Rule continues to work the outside groove. Just two to go. Spike Manitol, former modified competitor here at the Speedway, shows the way in the number 89. Sees two to go, followed by Kelvin in the 27. Now the battle is for third. Mark Field gets it sideways between turns one and two. He has Russ Johnson and Rod Moody at the back bumper. White flag in the air, one to go. Now trying to find a way to get up beside the 72 drops back just a little bit. Rides to the outside of Russ Johnson. Out of turn four, check and flag in the air. The heat goes to Spike Manitow, followed by Bubba Pelton in the 27, then the 72 of Mark Field, the 19 of Russ Johnson, and the 08 of Rod Moody, your top five. Winner of the second qualifying heat in the Super Sportsman Division down at the start-finish line area. It's Spike Manitol in the team towing. Number 89 is outside Joe Bowser, runner-up opening day in the number 32. And last week's feature winner in the number 33, former champion Mike Johnson. Bobby Gahan back on the speedway in the number 50. At turn four, we have Green. Bobby Libby from the point. Right at his back bumper, Andy Lude in the number 56. Then comes Paul Johnson, side-by-side -side battle. Bobby Randall gets sideways, he and the 22 touch. And that takes three or four cars right over the bank. That will require the caution flag as the 33 and the 22 set atop turn number four. We will have a quick realignment. So when you are in need of paving, remember the name, Dayton Sand and Gravel. Right now, Blackman Eddie Walt says we're ready to try it again at turn four. Green is out. Bobby Libby gets a good jump from the pole. The battle is for second. Paul Johnson to the inside. Andy Liu to the outside. Then back in the third place, fourth place position, Gary Pulsifer in the 41. Then a side-by-side -side battle. 33 is Mike Johnson, the 13, Mike Mayetta. Ten laps on tap. Second qualifier for the late models. Very, very competitive division. All of these cars and drivers capable of grabbing a feature event. But right now, the man on the move is Mike Johnson. In the number 33, Johnson working hard to the outside of Andy Liu, now takes a look to the outside of Paul Johnson. Keep your eyes on the number 33. He won the main event here last week. He is a former champion and always a car to watch.
Mike Johnson going wheel to wheel with cousin Paul Johnson in the 35. They put the pressure now to race leader Bob Libby. Libby has a mirror full of Johnsons. To the outside, here comes Mike Johnson. Libby, but he has a hard charging Mike Johnson in the outside lane. Johnson puts a bumper ahead. Here comes Libby back to draw it even. Out of turn four, side by side, they touch. Mike Johnson takes it over. Hard charge to the outside and makes his presence known in week number two. They will see just two to go. Next time by. Paul Johnson right out over the apron as he works now to the outside of Bobby Libby. Has to drop back. Side-by-side -side battle now for the third place position. White flag is out, one to go. New chassis for Mike Johnson in the number 33 and it is to his liking. He will see the check and flag wave. Qualifier to Mike Johnson, followed by Bobby Libby, Andy Lude, Paul Johnson, and Jill Bowser. As he coasts down to collect the colors, nice round of applause, please, for Mike Johnson in the RJ Grandin Polar Beverages, number 33. The 56 is driven by Robert Budwell. Hopefully we got them all. Assistant starter Junior Niles handling the flags for the semi-feature. Base car onto the infield pit road. Blackman says all clear. Look for a start at turn four. Green is out. Side by side down into the turns one and two, slight advantage now goes the 03 up the inside. In his rookie year here at the Speedway, that's Keith Lovejoy showing the way. Black flag out already, we'll get back for in just a minute. Scott Chapman right up the inside, shows the way. Wayne Whitten is in the zero, David Raymond in the number three, then comes Ed Gallant and Ralph Height, your top five. Dallas, the black flag is for the number three, David Raymond. Continues to be Scott Chapman, and he has a strong challenge with Wayne Whitten in the zero. Comes David Raymond, Ed Gallant, and rookie Ryan Shepard in the 34. Sideways in turn four is Severance in the 28. Does a nice job of bringing the car back. Jeff Severance from Hollis, also a rookie. This is certainly the year of rookies. Back up front, a challenge to the leader. Wayne Whitman. Working to the outside of race leader, Scott Chapman. Caution flag. Caution flag was for the number three. They were unable to get his attention with the black flag, which is, of course, the disqualifying flag or the consultation flag, as it may also be used. And officials tell us the reason. No driving gloves. Fire-resistant driving gloves are required here at Beach Ridge Motor Speedway, part of the required safety equipment. Rookie and a veteran occupy the front row. Scott Chapman, the veteran on the inside. Rookie Wayne Whitten Green is out. Side by side across the strike. Side by side in the turn one. 
Scott Chapman in the 85. Wayne Witten in the zero. Now the rookie on the move, Ryan Shepard, working to the outside of veteran Ed Gallant. Talk about a family affair here at the Beach Ridge Motor Speedway. A lot of second generation racers. You're seeing one of them out there in the number 24, 34. Rather, that's Ryan Shepard, son of Dwight Shepard. With a fine run here this afternoon. As he works to the outside of the veteran Ed Gallant in the 13. Also a fine run by Wayne Whitten in the zero. Coming up on the halfway mark indicates starter Junior Niles. Side by side, right straight, back through the field. On the move, the 111 Pee Wee Knight. Veteran out of Standish, Maine, looking for racing room, but he is momentarily boxed in, unless he wants to elect to get out in that third groove. Wayne Whitten now with a strong run out of the two turn on the back stretch, but here comes Chapman right back to make it that side by side battle once again. Whitten with about a three quarter car length lead that time across the stripe. Continu continues to work hard on the outside, trying to squeeze by. This time he does. Down into turn three, your new leader, Wayne Whitten. Now in a battle with Ryan Shepard in the 34. A couple of rookies working hard on the outside. Here comes Shepard now as he takes over the second place position, followed by Pee Wee Knight in the 111. Also on the move, Gordon Nelson in the 61. Nelson, a veteran here of many years at the Speedway. Just two laps to go, indicates the starter this time by. Pee-wee Knight now trying to make a bid for that second place position. Keep your eyes on the 111 as he looks to the outside of Shepard in the 34. White flag will be out. We have a car off over the top of turn three. It's the 58. Knight on the move, the 111 now up to challenge race leader, Whitten. Whitten on the inside, Knight to the outside, here they come to the flag. I believe it was Whitten by a bumper. Rookie Wayne Whitten just managing to hold off the veteran in the 111, Pee Wee Knight. Outstanding run by a couple of rookies here in this semi-feature this afternoon. With a checkered flag going to Wayne Whitten out of Kennebunk, Maine. And an outstanding run by another rookie, Ryan Shepard in the 34. And of course, a fine run by the veteran Pee Wee Knight in the 111. But collecting the hardware this afternoon. Ready to try it once again. Kurt Bean, Bob Collette. At turn four, Green is out. Kurt Bean in a quick run from the pole. Car out of shape on the backstretch. with a lot of pressure from Jackie Roussel. Battle is four seconds. Roussel gets the car sideways again. That opens up the inside for Mike Grant. Last qualifying spot right now would be in the hands of the number 30. Or 21, I guess. 
21. Kyle Hinkson would be the last qualifier. Kirk Bean just running away with a consolation event. Comfortable lead over Jackie Roussel in the 19. Then comes Mike Grant in the third place position in the number nine. Paul Collette in the 87. Rick Libby in the 77. And on the move, the number 30. Ken McLeod and the number two of Hans Meyer. Here's the last qualifier at the moment in that eighth position would be the number ten. Kyle Hinkson takes over the last qualifying position in number 21. Jackie Roussel just smoking that right rear tire. That is taking its toll as he takes it on a pit road. It goes back in the hands of Charlie Roussel in number 10. Approaching the halfway mark. Kirk Bean in a very comfortable lead, but number 42. Second hands. Meyer is in third place. Then comes Ken McLeod in the number 30 and Carl Hinkson in the number 21. Battle for second, and it is a three-way battle. Mike Grant with all kinds of pressure from Hans Meyer has Ken McLeod working to his eye outside now. 57, having retired to pit road. Battle continues for the second and third place, place position. Meyer into the back end of the number nine of Mike Grant. Has to back out of it just a little bit. Has Ken McLeod to his outside now. Last qualifier continues to be the number 10 of Charlie Roussel. The number two, Hans Meyer, continues to work over the back end of the number nine of Mike Grant. Grant doing a nice job of Holding the nine right on the rail. Just two laps to go. White flag in the air for Kirk B. Straight away lead over Mike Grant. Grant goes a little wide. Here comes Meyer up the inside, taking over that second place position. Rookie Hans Meyer in the number nine. Check it flag in the air. Kurt Bean collects the consolation event, followed by Meyer, Grant, Hinkson, and McLeod. Your top five. Last qualifier unofficially was the number 10. Intermission time. I'd like to introduce to you a person whose mom has played a very big role in his life. Maybe for some of you younger folks that are sitting in the grandstand with us today, my mom seems to be a pain in your neck. Here's a pain in this guy's neck too, but let me tell you, it's panned out well for him. Five championships in all at this speedway. Would you please welcome forward out of South Portland, Maine, Mike Maeta. Well, Mike, we traditionally like to start the season off with track chat. Speaking with some of our former champions, the defending champions in their respective divisions, we had a chance to talk with Chris Rule last week and got some insight even on his plans. We talked with you today, and the car is not out here. What's going on in the pit area? 
Well, they got a few adjustments to make. You didn't notice the heat. It was kind of out to launch, so they're making some adjustments on it, getting it ready for the feature. What happens to, to you as a driver when you come out in the heat and the car is, as you say, just completely out the lunch? I mean, what happens inside your head? Do you say, man, I'm missing out on valuable points that I could be grabbing here and, and in pursuit of a championship? No, I kind of, I, I think I knew what it was right off the bat. So we, you know, we just missed the setup. Um, as far as the points go, it's too early to worry about that right now. We're just going to try to win some races and, and be there every week. We'll talk a little bit off the, uh, off the subject of racing for a moment. When we just introduced you, we talked uh, a little bit about your mom, who's been such a, an instrumental point in your life, and your whole family is. But is mom here today in the pit area? Yeah, she's over there sitting on the car, staying warm. <laughs> she loves watching your race, but she also wants to be comfortable. The whole family is pretty much involved. Yeah, they are. That's why, well, that's why we enjoy the sport. And, you know, my, my dad and my mother are here every week. My brother's are here every week. You know, it's something we just get together every week. Some people go to their mother's house every week and eat supper. We come over here and race. So, you know, it's, it's a family thing, and that's why we enjoy it so much. The people on the stand. I may uh, put you on the spot for a second if I ask if you did anything for your mom for Mother's Day or not. I know she's here, and she's do so much every day. Diane, I'm going to ask you for that other mic. This seems to be being affected by the wind. Thank you, Diane. So did you do anything with Mom for Mother's Day today? Or is it too early? A Sunday, you got to get out here to the racetrack. Well, I had it all taken care of before <laughs> today Before today rolled around. Uh, we chipped in and bought her a, a ring for Mother's Day, and, and I got her a card that plays music when you open it up. So I'm kind of a softie, too. <laughs> well, that's nice. Well, tell us now, five championships, one in our modified division, four in the late model sportsman division and if memory serves correct there aren't many other people that have achieved so many championships at this speedway in the history in 44 years here Ralph Cusack surmounted about a dozen Dick Walsenhume up around 10 you're at five some others uh, Mike Johnson I believe has four are you shooting for a goal of uh, amassing as many as you can or is this still a year-to-year -year thing for you it's just a year-to-year -year thing you know we got a real good team Steve Roman he heads it up and he is in charge of the team. I do. He tells me what to do. So um, his wife, Betsy, she's really helping us out a lot this year. And it's just, it's, it's like a little family in itself, you know, our racing team. We've got Barry Curtis and uh, Herbie Brown and Glenn. And we've got some new guys, Forrest Sanborn. And uh, it's just, everybody works good together. Everybody gets along good together. And we come out here to have fun. This isn't a business. We don't make any money at it, as you know. So we're just out here to have fun. And when the fun goes away, we'll probably go away. But... It's so much fun to race out here. You know, we like everybody out here, and this is really where we belong, I guess. Do you have a, a plan for how long you'll stay in the sport? You say you take it year to year, and when it's not fun, you'll get out of it. But, I mean, it is fun for you now. Do you see any place down the road? And, and Mike Maeda's mind, has he ever said, you know, 10 more years of this, 5 more years of this, or is it forever? Well, you know, I know we're going to have to quit sometime. We was out here Wednesday night practicing with the car because we're still trying to get it set up here a little bit and Mikey went out in the car and turned just as fast times as I did so <laughs> sooner or later I'll be able to stand on the bank and, and, and teach him you know a few things but uh, right now I, I'd like to stay in it and say I'm going to stay in it forever but we'll just have to see what happens. He gets going much better you will be standing on the sideline and he'll have the 13 out here instead of the three. Bob Randall is a very good friend of yours and Channel 6 did a real nice piece here a couple of weeks ago about the uh, friendly confrontation you guys have and a lot of these fans uh, and a lot of any race fans don't understand that that outside of, of uh, the competition on the track, there's a lot of camaraderie in the pit area. And, and uh, tell us a little bit about the relationship you have with Bob Randall, because you guys just have a ball in the pit area. Well, we just, you know, we park close to one another, so that's, I'm sure, has a little something to do with it. And I have a lot of respect for him, and I think he's got a lot of respect for me. And it's not just Bobby and I. I mean, we get along with the other guys, Mike Johnson, Paul Johnson, all them guys. I mean, we're real good friends, Andy Luda, all of them. I mean, everybody talks to one another in there. We don't have any problems. You know, if we have a problem on the racetrack, we talk it over. There's, you know, if you go to other tracks, you may have to put your boxing gloves on. You come here, you go in there, and you can talk. You know, and it's really, it's a nice atmosphere. You know, you couldn't ask for a better sport or a better atmosphere than this place right here. I have to relay a, a quick story to some of you folks. In at our annual banquet uh, last November, Mike Matter is being crowned as champion. Uh, Bob Randall made a, a big sweep of most all the prestigious awards at the banquet outside of a championship. He was voted the driver of the year at the Speedway, 
Uh, he was presented with the Memorial Blazer Award, which is one of the most coveted awards. He was just, it seemed that every other minute, Bob Randall was going up for some award. So finally, Mike Mayetta gets to go up for his championship trophy. He steps forward, he says, boy, I guess I should have finished second. Randall's getting everything tonight. So Randall really made out well at the banquet, so did you. But what's going on in the pit area now with him? Because he had a problem in, uh, during the heat race. Well, we got our welder in there, and he's using the welder. I really don't know what he's welding, but I'm sure we'll, you know, between his crew and our crew and whoever else is help that he needs, he'll have enough help to be out here for the feature. Speaking of features, last week, uh, not the best run for you. It's the first race. You're trying to get everything dialed in. Tell us a little bit about the car this year. Is it the same material? You're using a new car. What are you doing? It's a new car. We, we sold everything that we had that was outdated, you know, including the car that we had, that white car that we ran number 18 last year. And we was able to get enough money to build a new car. Steve Roman built it in our shop, so that helps. You know, other than that, we couldn't have done it. And we're just sorting it out. When the warm-ups, the first warm-up there, we had an inline fuel filter that was giving us problems. And when we figured that out, we was racing the next day. So that we're really, last week was like a warm-up to us. And we had problems with the brakes, and we had a tire rank, so that threw the stagger off. So we was hit on both ends of the racetrack. We couldn't get in the corner because we couldn't stop it, and we couldn't get out of the corner because our stagger grew, and, you know, because that makes the car off and loose off the corner. So we was hitting both ways last year. And th that heat, I know it looked like we're really going to be hurting <laughs> tonight, but we get the t right tires on, and I think we'll be in good shape for the feature. You know, here we sit today, uh, according to the, the weathermen, it was, I don't know what it was supposed to do for a while. They said we were going to get rained out today, and, and then they told us it was going to turn off sunny and warm today, and it's really done neither. Does that affect uh, the racetrack itself and the cars competing on it? Do these type of conditions kind of cool, kind of damp? Does this affect the racing? It does a little bit. I mean, a, a hot track reacts differently to the, the tires react differently to a hot track than to a cold track. Uh, I think a cold track or a cool track is a faster track. So I kind of like the coolness as far as the driver goes, but I'm sure the people sitting over there don't. But I mean, as far as we go, it's, it's a lot better on us and our equipment, I think, when it's cool. Is there an ultimate set of conditions that you like to have, say, uh, we go into next Saturday night? Ultimately, what type of uh, weather pattern do you and your crew look for? We like it a little bit on the cool side, because racing at night, you know, you don't have the sun beating on the track. The track will change from a heat to a feature just because the sun goes down, you know, after you're done running the heats and, you know, things cool down a little bit. I mean, you can notice a change just in that aspect. So we like a cool, I would say a cool evening. It, it's amazing the amount of science that goes into uh, setting up these cars just between a heat and a feature, and that's something that uh, a lot of people don't realize, I don't think. But obviously it's worked out well for you for five championships. So we're setting for another championship this year. Well, I'm going to tell you something. It's not going to be no cakewalk. You know, Mike Johnson's got a new car, and he's going real good, and, and I like to see that, you know. Um, Paul Johnson always goes good. Bobby Randall always goes good. I like, that's the competition. I mean, that's what the sport's all about. I mean, go out there and just win every race or dominate or anything like that. It really doesn't do anything for anybody, I don't think. It's, th this sport is competition, and I like to see competition. I welcome competition, you know, because me and Mike can get out there and run door handle to door handle. That's what these people pay to come and watch, you know, and, and it's good to have guys like them that are going good and that we can race with and, and race hard with and put on a show for the people. So that we welcome the competition. A final question on that. You've mentioned Mike Johnson a few times just in conversation. I know a lot of the other drivers we've talked to in the pit area keep talking about the 33 late model. And is that the one that everybody right now is gauging themselves by? He seems to have got the jump on things. Yeah, they, they get their act together, but we're going to be right there. We're not going to let them get away too far, and, and I'm sure a lot of the other guys are. You know, Being out front, everybody thinks that's the place to be, but I want to tell you what, there's a lot of pressure being out there, you know, and, and the pressure's on him now, and we can chase him down, and we got nothing to lose. You know, He's the one that's got it all to lose, so we'll be there all year, and I'm sure he'll feel it. Only one race down. You've got plenty of time to work on it. Well, we thank you for spending the time with us today, and we wish you luck tonight. Thank you, Andy. Ladies and gentlemen, again, a nice round of applause for Mike Matter here. Please we'll go back to you as we get set to uh, hold out on the weather pattern here. Hope for the best, and we'll be on to our first feature of the Limited Sportsman Studio next. One, two, three, gentlemen, start your engine.
Let's begin down the front stretch. Wave your hat, your hand, your handkerchief. Let the drivers know you're sending them off with your best wishes. The challenge right up the inside. The 08 working hard beneath the 83. It's a side by side battle spin in turn three. Alan Burby gets turned about several other cars. Tim Jenner, the 29, David Wiles, the 77, Rick Libby, and we go under caution. All the cars able to get underway. Flat right front on the number 50 of Alan Burby. He'll work his way back on the pit road. The way only two drivers in the 91 season were able to claim two feature wins. They were Rick Furnett with two and Danny Bubar with two. Danny Bubar collected, of course, opening day. Pace car makes its way onto the infield pit road. Flagman Eddie Walt says we're ready. Points to turn four. Ready for a start. Green is out. Donnie Whitten from the point. Three wide racing into turn one. Billy Thompson on the move on the outside as he works to the outside of Al Meserve. Now takes a look to the outside of race leader Donnie Whitten. Wayne Pollen on the move as he works up now to the outside of the 08. Side by side across the stripe down into turn one. Donnie Whitten in the 83. Billy Thompson in the number six. Thompson now squeaks it by on the outside. Trying to work down into that inside groove. New leader Bill Thompson in the number six. And we work in a lap number three of this 30 lap feature event. Three wide racing in turns one and two with Dave Fecto hanging it out in the third groove. Tangle on the back stretch. Car up into the Sand banking, I believe, is Rick Libby in the 77. He's back underway, and okay, we stay green. Donnie Whitten in the 83, all kinds of pressure from Al Meserve and Wayne Poland. Meserve working to the inside groove, Poland on the outside. Always good to keep an eye on some of the high point men. Larry Gelinas, the 91 champion, on the move in the number 37. Also watch the 24. Last week's feature winner, David Bulbar. Challenge for these high point men to work their way up through the pack and see if they can get to the front. But Billy Thompson right now is stretching it out to a comfortable lead as he holds better than a half straightaway lead now over the second place competitor Al Meserve in the 08. Then comes Kevin Buck who has secured third, Tim Gendron up to fourth, Donnie Whitten in fifth. Side by side battle for six, Kirk Bean and Wayne Polar. Working in lap number eight, comfortable lead for Billy Thompson in the number six. Kevin Buck on the move now as he takes a look to the outside of Meserve in the 08. Another car on the move, the 86 of Rob Herrick, looking for racing room as he is momentarily boxed in. Almost went between cars to make it three wide that last lap. Sits there in about the eighth place position. Cars stacked up from position two right on back through the field. Kevin Buck continues to work in the outside groove as does Wayne Coleman and Rob Herrick. Larry Gelinas on the move in the 87 as he is broken free now and works that outside groove.
Angle on the backstretch. Here's to be a bumper off the number 25 of Kevin Buck. He backs it back out into the speedway. Collects another competitor. Has debris off the... That will cause a caution. We have debris between turns three and four. I believe that's off the 21. The door ripped off the number 21 of Carl Hinkson. Also a tangle in the one and two area between the 88 of Mike Field and the number 49 driven by Kevin Rumry. They both head on to pit road. And that will be on June 20th when the American Canadian Tour comes to town for the running of the Coca-Cola 100. But right now, ready to restart at turn four. Green is up. Billy Thompson picking up where he left off. Followed by Tim Gendron in the number 12. Then comes Wayne Poland in the number 79. Battle for fourth. Al Meserve and Dennis Hall side by side for that fourth place position. Cars tangle in turn one. Al Meserve gets out of shape, gets turned about. Zero, 8 disabled there in the two-turn will require the caution flag. Just as the caution flag waves. All clear from Flagman Eddie Walsh atop the flag stand as the drivers glance over one last time. This time it will be Billy Thompson and Tim Gendron to bring them down. Look for a start out of turn four. Green is out. Side by side, slight advantage to the outside. The 12 with Tim Gendron. Thompson right back hard through turns two. On the backstretch, securing the lead once again. Couple of drivers running hard in the outside groove. Dennis Hall spin in turn one. The 99 of Jim Culprit. Evidently losing an engine. Looks like he dumped oil. Probably spun in his own oil. That requires the caution flag once again. Yes, oil all over turn one. Tough break for our charger in the number 99. Jim Culprit Jr. always a strong runner here in the limited sportsman division. Now from atop the flag stand. 14 laps down. We look for Green once again as Billy Thompson and Tim Jenner bring the field down. At turn four, Green is out. Billy Thompson right back to the front, followed by Jenner. Then comes Wayne Poland now with Larry Gelinas working hard on the outside. Works his way out and around the 79. Sets his sights on the number 12 who holds down the second place position. Larry Gelinas in the 37, defending champion here in the limited sportsman division. Always a hard charger. Driver who is usually able to start at the back and work his way up to the front. After slipping just a bit, Jelinas up to challenge the number 12 once again. Also working that outside groove, Robbie Herrick in the 86. Trying to get up and mount a challenge to the 79 of Wayne Polin. Jelinas tried beneath the number 12. There just wasn't room enough as Tim Jenron closed the door. Forces Jelinas into the outside groove once again, right up in the third groove. Loses a bit of ground. Right back to challenge on the backstretch. Once again, Jelinas up beside the number 12 of Tim Gendron.
slips a little bit coming off the fourth turn. So far, Joanne is finding that outside groove a little difficult to make work as he has his work cut out now, trying to find a way around the number 12 of Tim Gendron. As they battle for that second place position, this of course takes the heat off the race leader, Billy Thompson, as he continues to cruise out front with about a half straightaway lead over the second place competitors. Spin out of turn four by the 87, Bob Collette. He's on the way and he stayed green. The race continues for that second place position as Tim Jenner continues to battle Larry Gelinas. They go at it wheel to wheel. Herrick spins it off over the top of turn number one, Rob Herrick. Another young driver who was working hard in that outside groove. Five laps to go, indicates flagman Eddie Walsh. The race continues to be for second place. As Tim Gendron continues to hold off Larry Gelinas. Gelinas now with about a half car length lead. Smoke pours from the 62, that's Jeff Charland. Problems on the 62 as he heads on a pit road. Larry Gelinas now working hard in the outside groove, has worked himself into that second place position, dropping Tim Genron back to third place. Blackman Eddie Walsh indicates just two to go this time by. Billy Thompson will see the two flags. Second place, Larry Gelinas in third, Tim Jenrett. Then comes Wayne Poland in the number 79 is fourth. Dennis Hall rounds out the top five in the number 94. Thompson out of turn four, will see the white flag in the air. One lap to go. Number seven on the pit road. Problems on the Steve Berry automobile. Check it flag out, Billy Thompson captures the feature event, followed by Larry Gelinas, Tim Gendron, Wayne Poland, and Dennis Hall, your top five. Fine run by young Billy Thompson. That man who opened last weekend with nothing but problems, indicated they had a bent valve in the engine, come to find out if you were here last week. The number six, really unable to compete and a fine run by Billy Thompson. He will parade the colors and then be back. We'll have a chance to hear from this afternoon's limited sportsman feature event winner. Picking up the second and third place hardware in the number 30, Larry Gelinas. In second place and in third place, Tim Jenron in the number 12 with a fine run. Billy Thompson returns the colors to flagman Eddie Walsh. As he prepares to exit his number six, we go trackside now to Andy Cusack. Thank you, Bruce. Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome him into victory lane, Billy Thompson. <laughs> Billy, congratulations. Thank you. It's quite a run today. Uh, all but lap number one, the 83 had the lead that time through, and then it was yours the rest of the way. Was it that easy for you? Well, it wasn't too bad, but we'll find out next week when I start in the back. The track is pretty slippery today anyway, but the weather's doing that. I'd like to thank all my sponsors. Last, year, uh, last week we bent the valve and they all came through this week and helped out repairing that. I got a new sponsor, Yarmouth Driving Academy. They're supplying my gas for the year. Just got them this week. Malcolm Portals helped a lot. Big Bird, George LaPlante, Pizza Barn. Phil, Phil Pinkham's helped a real lot. I don't know if he's here today or not. 
Uh, I'd like to thank everybody anyway. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. Happy birthday to my mother, it's Tuesday. Happy birthday to myself, it's tomorrow. <laughs> this is a nice birthday present. <laughs> Congratulations, Billy. This is Dick Maddox from the Dayton Sand and Gravel Company, who has the trophy for you. Yeah, for Dayton Sand and Gravel, I'd like to present this to you. Thank you. Thank you too, Billy. Congratulations and happy birthday. Ladies and gentlemen, Billy Thompson. The Kate's Car Connection, Bill Rand Bob Randall. Next in the number 41, the young man who led about 40, 35 laps yesterday from Gray, Gary Palsifa. Next, Joe Bowser in the number 32, ready for a start out of turn four. Green is out. Barry Babb into a quick lead, followed by Gary Johnson. Then comes Mike Mayetta, Glenn Cusack, and Pete Rondo. Rondo up quickly to challenge Cusack. Catch the back end of that field. Mike Johnson in the 33, Craig Stroud in the 7, Tom Bragg in the 48, the 51 of Kerry Winslow. Scott Watts and Bob Gahan in the number 50. Continues to be Barry Babb showing the way. Get a clock on the zero in just a moment. Cusack gets it out of shape up off from the one and two turn area, takes it right on the pit road. Barry Babb turning the track in approximately 15.48 seconds. Good time for the youngster from Windham, Maine in the zero. Continues to hold about a three to four car length lead over Gary Johnson. Then comes young Mike Mayetta. Pete Rondo and Bobby Libby now holds down the fifth place position. On the move, Mike Mayer in the 13, Bob Randall in the 91. Barry Babb holding up on a second and a half lead over the second place competitor, Gary Johnson. Mike Bayetta up to challenge Bobby Libby now. Bayetta working to the outside and around Bobby Libby to take over that fifth place position. Side by side battle for a second now. Mike Bayetta Jr. works to the outside of Gary Johnson. Spin into turn one. Bobby Libby gets the car looped. Several cars off over the top. And caution flag is looks like the Libby car and perhaps the Gahan car come together in the smoke up off the top of turn one. Have to wait to get a word from the safety crew on looks as though both cars are running and perhaps they're hooked together. Wire this afternoon's feature event, and that's Barry Babb in the zero. Younger brother to Bobby Babb in the number four. 
All clear from Flagman Eddie Walsh. Pace car onto the infield pit road. Look for a start out of turn four. Green is out. Barry Babb once again into a quick lead. This time, side-by-side -side battle for second place. Mike Mayetta Jr. along with Gary Johnson battling for that second place position. Mike Mayetta Sr. holds down the fourth place position. Guys squirrely out of turn four. Track may be just a little slippery as Billy Thompson indicated. Attributing that to the weather conditions. Gary Johnson now going at it side by side with Mike Mayer Sr. As he has slipped just a little bit on the outside. Paul Johnson up to occupy the fifth place position. Here comes last week's feature winner, Mike Johnson. Father Son team occupying the second and third place positions. Senior Mayotte now takes it into the outside groove, working to the outside of his son. Now looking to the outside of race leader Barry Babb. Mike Mayetta trying to take the number 13 to the front for the first time in the 92 season. Out of turn two on the backstretch. New leader Mike Mayetta, the defending track champion here at the Speedway. Barry Babb fights back on the inside, unable to draw it up beside Mayetta. Working in lap number 20 of this 35 lap feature event. Get a watch on Mike Mayetta this next lap. And see how his time compared with Barry Babb's time. Obviously just a little bit quicker. about the same, 15.60. Mike Johnson on the move now, the number 33 last week's feature winner and a former champion here at the Speedway. Has the number 33 in the outside groove now as he works to the outside of Mike Mayetta Jr. Trying to challenge for that third place position. Draws it even on the backstretch. They go wheel to wheel in a turn three. Putting the pressure now on Barry Babb. Tangle right here out of turn four. We have the 53 of Gary Johnson, the 44 of Pete Rondo, the 22. Kerry Winslow, F80 involved in that, able to drive away, as is the 22. Give you a word on these drivers from safety in just a moment. Ready? 56 and the 22 along with the F80. All able to get back after some minor repair. Flagman Eddie Walsh indicates to the drivers it's all clear. Pace car makes its way to the infield pit road. Mike Mayetta Sr. and Barry Babb bring him down out of turn four. Green it is out. Side by side across the strike. Mike Mayetta. Mayetta on the inside. Barry Babb now with a strong run on the outside. Noses ahead of the number 13 of Mayetta. Babb trying to get himself back into that lead as he works hard to the outside of Mike Mayetta. Mayetta battles back on the inside. They go at it side by side. Side by side across the stripe, down into turn one. Slight advantage on the inside, this time to Mayetta. Babb fights back on the outside. Father-son team going at it. 
nose to tail. Mike Mayetta Sr. in the 13, his son, Mike Jr. in the number three now squeezes beneath the zero of Barry Babb to take over that second spot. Here comes Mike Johnson looking for racing room as he works beneath the zero of Barry Babb and at the back bumper of the number three. Barry Babb hung on the outside, no place else to go but to try to make it work out there. Also on the move on the outside, here comes Bobby Babb, the number four. Coming up on the lap car, the number 56, that is going to provide a squeeze for those drivers on the outside. Andy Lude moves over, gives racing room, as he is experiencing problems on the number 56. The Mayettas hold down positions one and two. Then comes Mike Johnson. Very bad. Paul Johnson go at it side by side now. Battle is for the fourth place position. Paul Johnson in the 35. Very bad in the zero. Right at the back bumper, here comes Joe Bowser in the 32, trying to break into that top five. He now works beneath the zero of Barry Bat. Laps winding down, they are working in lap number 32. Mike Johnson on the move. Side-by-side -side battle for second. Mike Johnson working to the outside of Mike Mayetta, Jr. Mike Johnson. Just one lap to try to catch Mike Mayetta. White flag is out. Johnson desperately trying to reel in the 13 of Mike Mayetta. Time running out. He comes toward the back bumper. Checkered flag in the air. Mike Mayetta, Mike Johnson, Mike Mayetta Jr., Joe Bowser, and Paul Johnson. Your top five. Defending track champion, Mike Mayetta. Down to collect the colors. And just the second week of the 92 race season to find his way into victory lane. Fine run by Mike Johnson as he came all the way from the back of the pack up to second place. And a fine run by young Mike Mayetta Jr. Mike Mayetta returns the colors to flagman Eddie Walsh. We said they're going to be standing in line for track chat now two weeks in a row, Andy. Driver who's on track chat wins the feature. Let's go track side now to Andy Cusack. You're back out front again. Yeah, it feels good this time. I'll tell you, for a while, when you first went past Barry Babb, there was a hands-down run-by for yourself. You didn't see any much problem at all. Then the restart, what happened to your car or what happened to Barry's? Because he really gave you a run for the money then. Well, I'm trying to conserve the tires, Andy, because that's, I think that's going to be the key to the... Uh, Racing this year and the success of a guy that's going to win the championship. We've got to save the tires because we got to run them every week. So uh, we had to last year too, but the track got greasy. I mean, I don't know what happened there after that restart. My tires got cold. I didn't keep enough heat in them or what, but I was kind of loose. It feels a little bit moist in the air right now. Is that affecting the track and the car some? Yeah, that's probably got a lot to do with why it got greasy there after that restart. If I kept some heat in the tires, we'd have probably done a lot better off. Well, it's a quick and easy run for the 13 today and win number one on the season. We know we'll be seeing you back again. Dick Maddox from Dayton Sand and Gravel has the first place trophy for you. 
Dick. The Aberdeen Senator would like to present you with this. Thank you very much, Dick. And uh, there's, I've got a lot of these Dayton Sand and Gravel trophies home, and I really like them. And they have, this one's going to be added right to it. Congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, Mike Mayetta. Bruce Albert, back to you. Hey, Andy. I want to know what it is about the guy being on track chat and then winning the feature. I don't know, but if, uh, if I'm adding luck to that, I'll split the take with you. Hey, sounds like a good <laughs> deal to me. Scarborough in a Pontiac Trans Am. The number one of David Spray. Row two to the inside from Falmouth, Maine, driving the four Thunderbird 07 Doug Shores to his outside from Scarborough in the IROC number 89 Spike Manitow. Row three to the inside from Hollis, Maine in the Pontiac, the number 72 of Mark Field to his outside. From Keysa Falls in a Chevy Beretta 08 Rod Moody. Row four to the inside from Scarborough. The number 27 Buick of Richard Bubba Pelton. Next from Cumberland in the number 80, 69 rather Tim Maloney. To his outside from Springvale in the Pontiac number 93 Danny Palmer. Next from Scarborough the number 7 of Kevin Durgan. The number 19 from Hollis is Russ Johnson. The 14 from Scarborough Chris Rule. In the number 2 this afternoon Jim Emerson. The number four is driven by Lloyd Washburn. The number 40, Jeff Selaby. In the number 10 four, Ed Strong. The number 80, driven this afternoon by Butch Bustle. The number nine, Phil Weeks. The zero, Gary Clough. Ready to go green out of turn four. David Sprague works hard to the outside of David Bath. Sprague in the number one, Bath in the number five. Sprague with about a half car advantage from the outside, trying to work his way out and around Bath, and he does. David Sprague in the Knoll High Industries Channel One video number one, takes it to the front. Side by side battle shaping up for the second place position, finds David Bath with the pressure from Doug Shores and Spike Manitol going at it side by side for the position number three. Shores on the move in the 07 as he works to the outside of David Bath. Trying to take over that second place position. Doug Shores out of turn four, squeezes it by the number five to secure a second place position. Across David Bath, back to third place position, Spike Manitol sits in fourth. Mike Field rounds out the top five. down into turn three, puts a fender ahead at turn four. They exit turn four. Slight advantage to the 07 from the outside that time by the strike. Duck shows to continue that hard charge on the outside.
spin at the exit of the infield pit row. That is the 99 of Steve Wilson. Tangle on the backstretch. The 72 right up on top of the 03 of Steve Howard. Howard unbuckling the straps, so indication from here would be that he is okay. We'll get a word from officials in just a moment. Officials indicate the drivers are fine. Steve Howard is out of the car. Over to talk with Mark Field. clear now 11 laps down flagman Eddie Walsh indicates be ready for a start at turn four Doug Shores and David Spray bring the field down for a start green is out David Sprague with a slight advantage as they race to turn one Shores right back hard at turn two to turn three slight advantage to Doug Shores in the 0-7 takes the lead to himself as they complete lap number 12. David Bath looks for racing room beneath the number one. Could not find it. On the move on the outside. Kevin Durgan in the number seven. Fourth, Spike Manitow on the inside, Kevin Durgan to the outside. They race to the back bumper, the number five of David Bath. Doug Joe is beginning to stretch it out now over Sprague, who holds down the second place position. Kevin Durgan continues his march up the outside spin by Steve Wilson as he loops it at the exit of the infield pit road, the infield pit road area. Kevin Durgan continues his march to the front. Up now to the back bumper of the number one of Sprague. Also on the move, Richard Bubba Pelton in the 27 as he works to the outside of the number nine, 89 of Spike Manitow. Smoke coming from the back of the number 27. Have to hope it isn't anything too serious. Durgan continues to work around the back bumper of the number one. Takes a look to the outside once again as they race down to turn one. Durgan hard back in the throttle on the outside. Draws it even now at turn three. Sprague to the inside. Durgan to the outside. They exit turn four across the stripes. Slight advantage to the outside. The number seven of Durgan. Durgan continues the hard charge from the outside. Secures the second place position. 20 laps down. Kevin Durgan now will set his sights on race leader Doug Shores. But he has a long gap to close up. Shores into lap traffic, working to the outside of Jess Salibi now. Salibi, a rookie in the number 40, getting his feet wet in this new super sportsman division. Doug Shores able to maintain his comfortable lead over 
Second place competitor, Kevin Durga. Good half straightaway advantage for Doug Shores. Durgan now in the lap traffic as he works his way around the number 40. Just five to go, indicates Flagman Eddie Walsh. Durgan now works his way around the 99 of Steve Wilson. Open track now for the number seven. But turn four. Doug Shores will see the white flag. One lap to go. David Bath sideways out of turn four. Does a nice job of collecting the car but loses a bundle of positions. Whether he had a tire going down or something happened but right out of shape. Check it. Flag in the air. Doug Shores captures the feature event. Kevin Durkin, David Spray, Spike Matatal and Richard Bubba Pelton. The top five. Just an outstanding run for the youngster from Falmouth, Maine. One of the few Fords in competition. But here at Beach Ridge Motor Speedway, General Motors seems to hold forth. Doug Shores will make his parade lap and be back at trackside with Andy Cusack in just a few moments. Fine run by Kevin Durgan as he captures another second place finish. And a strong run by David Sprague in the Garrett Services Channel 1 video number one. Right now returning the colors to Flagman Eddie Walsh. Doug Shores. Car is out of Westbrook, Maine, sponsored by Ed's Batteries along with Kennison's. Fine run here this afternoon. Thanks, Bruce. And ladies and gentlemen, the first Ford in victory lane this season, welcome Doug Shores. Thank you, right, That was quite a run today. It looked relatively easy for you. Well, anything's easy, but the car stayed together, and that's a big part of this game. And last week we had troubles, and this week we got to stay together and hope we'll stay that way the rest of the season. Your team for two years straight has worked with Fords in the Super Sportsman division, one of only a few at the whole racetrack that are using Fords, and you guys are seeming to figure out the secret to this. Have you learned some over the winter? Have you thought more about it? Well, a lot of the, that this track is handling, and uh, we're starting to get it figured out. We haven't been here too long, but we're working with a new team this year. i got to thank Mike, the guy who's helped us out a lot this year, and Wayne and uh, John Bissonnet, who owns the car. So do you think it's not so much the product or the make of the car as much as it is just getting the thing to handle? No, I don't think the make so much to do with it. I mean, if we didn't win, it wouldn't be a Ford, right? There you go. Well, it certainly is a beautiful job with the body this year, too, in that Ford-style car. Dick Maddox, out of Dayton Sand and Gravel, has the first place trophy, one of what we hope will be one of many for you in 1992. Dick? Yeah, Dayton Sand and Gravel like to present with this trophy. Thanks a lot. Doug, congratulations. Thanks, Andy. Ladies and gentlemen, a nice round of applause again for Doug Shores. One to go, the Wildcat Division. Bruce. Thank you, Andy. Something a little bit different now, ladies and gentlemen, the Wildcats. Number 77. 78 is driven by Charles Tripp. The 85 is Chris Warming. The 92, Rick Weiss. The 93, Randy Meserve. And the 99, Clifford Leach. Ready for a start at turn four. Green is out. 24 jumps into a quick lead. That's John Usher.
cars up against the backstretch wall. The 911 hooked up with another car. Looks like the 66. That will bring the cars under caution. Another car off in the infield at the bottom of turn three. 66, John Waterhouse getting in the tangle there and hooked up with the 911 of Scott Dumont. Cars will continue under caution as we'll start out of turn four. Green is out. Battle at the front now. 24 trying to secure the lead once again, and he does. That is John Usher, followed by the 28 of Skip Butler. Then comes the 63 of Steve Clough, your top three. 38 on the move. That's Lyman McKegg, last week's feature winner. Spin in turn one, but the cars get straightened back out again. Number 20 got sideways, and he got some help and got straightened out. That's Larry Moyers. 24 continues to be your leader. A three-way battle now for that second-place position as they go three wide into turn three. He comes out on top. Lyman McKay. down front. Lyman McKay takes over the lead. Across the 24, John Usher back to second. Five finally gets the car refired and back out of the way. O five is Scott Reynolds. Leader continues to be McKay. Cars tangle in the one turn. Twenty-eight sixty-seven get together. They do a nice job of straightening it out. Angle right here in the front stretch. 69 manages to get the car straight once again. Lyman McKay continues to show the way in the number 38. Fire on the number one. It seems to extinguish itself. And he heads for pit road. Three wide racing into the one turn. Cars tangle. The number 20 gets turned about. Another tangle in the one and two turn area, the 56. And the number nine, it looks like. Steven Wrench in the number nine. Guys tangle hard off the top of turn number one. 2006, the 93. That is Randy Meserve, Meserve, and Connors both get the cars refired. 
17. Of course, it's high and dry up on the infield apron. That is Willie Bunnell. Another tango in the one turn area. This time the 53 and the 14 it looks like. That will bring the cars under caution as several of the cars unable to move. The 53 sits partially on the track. That's Bonnie Johnson. out. Flagman Eddie Walsh throws it when the cars are on the back stretch. And the 63 was certainly paying attention as he was watching the flagman. That is Steve Clough grabs the lead. Restart can get underway anywhere and particularly in this Wildcat division. Flagman is likely to throw that green whenever he thinks the lineup is tight enough to let him go. Lyman McCaig makes a rush to the front once again. He was caught napping on that restart, but he has it back underway. Last week's winner trying to put it back to the front as he is up to challenge the 63 of Steve Clough. Clough and McCaig go way high on the track. Clough says if you're going to do it, you're going to have to go way up high and now McCaig now hits it down low and may just try to take it down low this time. McCaig tries to go low, but he can't because of a lap car. Both cars take it way up high. Just two to go indicates Flagman Eddie Walsh. Lyman McKay going to try it on the outside once again. Gets it way up high, out of shape. Trying to find a way back to the front. This time he gets beneath the number 63. They go door handle to door handle down into turns three and four. McKay gets the car sideways. We'll see the white flag in the air. Lyman McKay retaking the lead. Clough gets the car sideways and turns one and two. Does a nice job of holding the number 63. Check it flag out. And two weeks in a row, it's Lyman McKay with a fine run. Had to do it the hard way after relinquishing the lead. Worked his way back to the front. And in second place, the 63 of Steve Clough. We thank you all for being here with us. Hope you'll make it a habit to join us each and every weekend for Short track racing at its very best, right here at the Beach Ridge Motor Speedway in West Scarborough, Maine. Remember, if you'd like to stay around for a bit, you will be welcome to come right out on the front stretch. If not, we urge you to drive carefully on your way home and bid you good day. <laughs>